Well, in natural sense, anyone that has the anemia or that's suffering from anemia, the body has a physical way of adaptation, so to speak. It's like an adaptation of adapting to the anemia, such that the intestines increase iron absorption from diet. Usually, we get iron from diet. Either you eat meat, either you eat fish, either you eat uh, green leafy vegetables, you know, or there are some individuals that try to drink blood or cook blood, something like that, like the Maasai in Central African Republic or Kenya. Um, routinely, we do not give them iron supplementation. Routinely, we don't. Well, just like any other individual, diet plays an important role in our well-being. Uh, apart from the fact that, yes, you need they need those macro elements and micro elements, so to speak. Super cell anemia patients need folate more than any other, met, uh, any other uh, element, so to speak. Some amino acids that are the building blocks, so to speak, you understand? So it makes, it actually, it, uh, proper nutrition actually, you know, improves their wellness as well too. In the sense that, to some extent, nutrition is connected to your immune system. So, and we know sickle cell anemia patients have some form of weakened immune system as well too. So with proper nutrition, they can be able, to some extent, to surmount or to, uh, let me say, uh, to, uh, to improve their immune, immune status as well too, with proper, uh, with, proper, with proper nutrition. Proper nutrition also makes them produce, well, let me just say blood as well too. If you look at someone that is starving, someone that is not eating properly, of course they grow lean, they are prone to infections, they are not able to withstand most of the physical stress and things like that, you understand? So I won't want that for our sickle cell anemia patients. So we also counsel on proper nutrition as well. So they should eat good, good food, balanced diet, you know, everything in moderation, you know, that's, that's where the world is, you know, tending towards to now. Everything in moderate quantities now. Uh, the carbohydrates in moderate quantities, the proteins in moderate quantities, you know, the vitamins, the oil, but water, you know, water, they cannot actually <laughs> see water is a moderate quantity for sickle cell anemia patients because they actually need it to keep their body hydrated so that the blood won't, won't sickle and then they won't have crisis frequently. So nutrition is also uh, one of those key things as well too. It helps uh, also in patient management because if you look at it, studies have actually shown that uh, sickle cell anemia patients that tend to take, that take, care, that take care of themselves properly, that have the means, you know, that are in the, will I say, upper class or upper financial cadre, so to speak, they tend to have less crises than the ones that are, you know, let me just use that below, uh, will I say, the below standard of living, so to speak. Studies have actually shown that as well, too. So we also play. Uh, place importance on, on, on hydration and nutrition for sickle cell anemia patients as well too. Yes, very, very important. Thalassemias are, it's like a sister, let me just use layman terminology as much as I can now. Thalassemias are like sister, it's like a sister to uh, sickle cell anemia. They belong to almost the same class of disease because they are disorders of hemoglobin synthesis. In sickle cell anemia, you know, earlier I explained something about a replacement in the hemoglobin, uh, on the hemoglobin chain, so to speak, or the amino acid sequence, so to speak, on the beta hemoglobin chain. That's for sickle cell anemia. Let me use this to narrate the, my example. If you have a bunch of 15 aranos, maybe 100 of them, and then everything is serial from 1 to 100, you know, that means at the end of the day, you still have your what? It's, it's 5,000 naira. As 50, 50 naira in 100, in 100 pieces. You can still spend it, you understand? Everything is 1 to 100. But in sickle cell anemia, you have maybe at the number 6 now, so to speak, of the serial number. That number 6 is changed with another note. You understand? At the end of the day, that means you have your 1 to 100 still intact, but the numbers are not sequential. You, you get what I'm trying to say now? But at the end of the day, you still have your 5,000 naira note, which you can still spend, you know. That is what sickle cell anemia is. When you have one of the serial number, so to speak, is being replaced by another number, another 15 naira note entirely that has a different serial number and it's just locked inside, you understand? That is something like, that's how sickle cell, that's like the basic, uh, will I say, uh, disorder that causes sickle cell anemia. Now, in thalassemias, 
you have the one to one hundred. You understand? But when you now get to like sixty, from number sixty, from sixty-one to one to one hundred is missing. You understand? So you no longer have your five thousand naira notes. You only have what maybe your three thousand naira notes now. Now your three thousand naira notes can do some things, but you'll not be able to do what the five thousand naira notes can do. So that's like me trying to explain what thalassemia is. Thalassemia is the incomplete sequence of amino acid chains on the beta hemoglobin uh, chain. You are, you, are expect, you expect to have 100, so to speak, but you only have 60. That's one form of thalassemia. I'm talking about for beta, maybe for thalassemia generally. Now that's one form of it. Then another form is that you get there, you are supposed to, you are, you are, you are expecting to get, you are expecting to find 15 naira notes numbered from 1 to 100. And you get there and you don't even find anything at all. That is from 1 to 100, everything is missing completely. That is, there's an absence, total absence of the beta globin chain. That is also a form of thalassemia as well too. And then in some cases, you can have everything numbered from 1 to 100. But as a result of mutations, so to speak, they will not be able to function properly. So that's also a form of thalassemia as well too. So thalassemia occur as a result of point mutations or deletions. Or sometimes it can be both on the either alpha hemoglobin chain or the beta hemoglobin chain. So in that instance, the individual that has thalassemia will present with myriads of symptoms depending on the severity of the type of thalassemia that's in question, so to speak. I hope I've been able to explain what the thalassemia is from what, from what sickle cell anemia is. Just trying to use Blayman you know, terminology now. Thalassemia are also genetic, just like uh, sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder as well too. Any, any individual that is any form of genotype, so to speak, can actually have a thalassemia. But in the actual sense, some of them may not have clinical symptoms because my, they might only have some form mild anemia or to moderate anemia to some extent. They might not actually express it. In the, I'm going to explain it later. But in sickle cell anemia, we know that some of these thalassemias, when they have them, it makes the clinical condition very worse. And sometimes, depending on the type of thalassemia they have, it can actually modify the severity of sickle cell anemia, depending on the type of thalassemia that they have. Now, there are two types of thalassemias. You know, earlier I was explaining something about there are alpha chains and beta chains in the hemoglobin. There are two alpha chains on the, there are two alpha chains and two beta chains. Two of them, four of them come together, together with the ion, ion moiety, so to speak. Let me just use it, let me, the ion atom to form hemoglobin because there's ion in hemoglobin. Now, chromosome 16, that like I said earlier, codes for the production of the alpha chain and the alpha light chain. There are four genes. There are four alpha genes, so to speak, on chromosome 16. If you still remember from biology that we have 44 chromosomes and two sex chromosomes, making all of us 46 chromosomes in total. But on your sex chromosome, you have 23 chromosomes. You have 22 chromosomes and one sex chromosome, so to speak, because the other half has to come from the other partner to make it 46, so to speak, you understand? So on chromosome 16, now, on both chromosome 16, that means you have two chromosome 16s now. There are, there are two alpha genes on them, or making four. So one chromosome 16 will have two for alpha, and the other chromosome 16 will have two, making it four. You understand? They are dual, they are dual genes. Some say it's alpha one and alpha two on each of them. So now that means you have alpha, 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 alpha in four places for alpha, for alpha genes now. Now, if there's deletion, so to speak, of one of the alpha genes, now that means the person individual will have three alpha genes remaining and then you have what these three alpha genes remaining so in this context this person is said to have what is referred to as an alpha thalassemia trait the person apart from having a mild anemia may never come down with any form of symptoms at all so the person the individual will never know that he has any form of thalassemia he will not know at all at the same time you can have two deletion of two of the alpha chromosomes and you are left with only two alpha chromosomes, you understand? In such individuals, they may just come down with moderate anemia that may never need transfusion, 
that maybe to some extent some of them may need folate support, folic acid support, so to speak, and they might not have any symptom at all that ever warrant them coming to the hospital. That's in the moderate form. But when you have deletion of three or four or all four of the alpha hemoglobin chain, so to speak, now this is where the problems now come. In. So the individual that has three deletions, you understand, to some extent may be able to survive. But they will need transfusion support, they will need full acid support, they will need to remove the spleen and things like that so that the little amount of hemoglobin they are producing can actually sustain life. That's what we refer to as the HBH disease. We call it HBH, H HBH, that is hemoglobin H disease. In the sense that some of them may grow to adulthood and then they might have a compensation by the, uh, by the beta chains, you know, to complement the missing alpha chains, so to speak. But in the context in which all the four alpha chains is missing, that is incompatible with life. The fetus usually die in the mother's womb as early as seven to eight months. The baby will die because of what severe anemia and the baby will have heart failure within the mother's womb. Except something is done. Even, even if something is done to some extent, we still cannot guarantee that the baby might survive. In Southeast Asia, so to speak, is the leading cause of uh, abortions or, or stillbirths in, 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 the, in, that, in that society, so to speak, because of the alpha thalassemias. So that one is incompatible with life. We call it heteroblastosis fetalis. It's incompatible with life in, so, in such context. And the one thing about the alpha chain is that it's the alpha chains that actually drive hemoglobin synthesis. So if there's a problem with alpha chains, there will always be a reduction in either the PCV or the red cell mass of the individual, that is the whole blood level of the individual will actually come down. So once there's a problem with alpha chain, the whole blood, red, the whole blood level of the individual will come down. And then of course the person you know, might not be able to function, except he comes to the hospital, they do transmission support and with uh, other things as well to, to make the individual you know, survive. Now that's for the alpha chain. Now the second type of thalassemia is the beta thalassemia. And usually this one usually occurs as a result of point mutations. Now, on chromosome 11, you have only one gene that codes for the beta chain, and you have two chromosome 11, so to speak. So that means you have only two beta chain, you know, in your system that has to complement the alpha chains to form the normal hemo adult hemoglobin, so to speak. So now there are three types of the beta thalassemia now. Beta thalassemia usually are commoner than the alpha thalassemias in the sense that those ones will invariably have symptoms and they will come to the hospital faster, unlike the alpha chain, uh, alpha thalassemias, in which if there's deletion of one or two, they might not have symptoms and they go about their normal life. So there are three types of the, of the beta thalassemia. The beta thalassemia trait is only when you have an incomplete, there's one of the beta chain, you know, I said something about two beta chains now. One of the beta chain is complete and the other half of the beta chain is incomplete. That is, there's some chains on, the, on it, but it's incomplete. You know, I said something about numbering one to 100, in which you find one to, one, one, one to 60, and the other ones are absent. Sometimes you might not have anything at all in the, in the bank notes that I talk, spoke about earlier. So if one of the beta chain is complete, and the other one is incomplete, so to speak, we call those that one beta thalassemia trait. The individual too, we might have mild anemia of no significance, very mild and the person might not come to the hospital at all. The second type of the beta thalassemia is what we call the beta thalassemia intermedia. The beta thalassemia intermedia is when there is either homozygous inheritance, let me, use, let me just put it this way, when there is in two copies of the incomplete beta chains, that is the first chain, beta chain is incomplete, the second chain is incomplete, or when you have one of the beta chain complete, and the other of the beta chain incomplete. That is, I mean absent rather. Let me, let me state it again. The first one I talked about down, the beta thalassemia intermedia, they have two copies of the beta chain that is incomplete. That is, let me just use B plus now. B plus signifies that it's incomplete. The B means it's complete. B plus means it's incomplete. B not means it's absent. Let me, if I use those terminologies, you might understand me better. So the beta thalassemia individual is if there's B plus B plus, that is a homozygous inheritance of an incomplete beta chain, or when there's B and B naught, 
that is a heterozygous inheritance of beta chain. One of the beta chain is complete, the other beta chain is absent. So that is thalassemia, beta thalassemia intermedia. Now, the third one, which is the most severe form, is with what we refer to as beta thalassemia major. Now, in beta thalassemia major, is when there is absence, total absence of the two beta thalassemia chains, that is B naught, B naught, or when there's B naught and B plus, that is one of them is incomplete and the other one is absent. Now, those category of people are the ones that we always, they mimic sickle cell anemia as well too. In the sense that they will have severe form of anemia, they might not survive until they have transfusions, they might not survive until they are given maybe, they are, they are also on folic, folic acid treatment just like sickle cell anemia. Sometimes they might have to remove their spleen. They also have leg ulcers too like sickle cell anemia. Uh, they are also prone to infections like sickle cell anemia. And some of these patients, if you do their hemoglobin erythrophoresis, just like in sickle cell anemia in which you will not find hemoglobin A, some of them, particularly the one that is beta not beta not, homozygous inheritance of the total absence of the beta hemoglobin chain, those ones too will not have an adult hemoglobin, just like sickle cell anemia. They won't have anything that is called HBA in their blood. So those ones invariably they prevent, present similar to like sickle cell anemia. Now, I said in, one, in some instances, these thalassemias may ameliorate the clinical symptoms of sickle cell and sometimes they may worsen the clinical symptoms of sickle cell anemia. In this context, in alpha, when there's a coexisting alpha thalassemia, that is absence of some or all, no, just say, let me say some of the alpha chains in sickle cell anemia. Because I said it's the alpha chain that drive hemoglobin synthesis. It will reduce the amount of hemoglobin that that sickle cell individual has, such that there will be reduced or reduction in the number of the circulating sickle cells in that individual. And of course, the less the number of sickle cells in the body, the better the outcome, so to speak, for that patient. So it may help that individual. Now, if there's a coexisting sickle cell anemia with beta thalassemia plus, that is that one that has the incomplete beta chain, to some extent, this sickle cell anemia patient, they will have a little, about 5% or 10% of their total quantity of hemoglobin being hemoglobin A. And it will also help reduce or cushion the severity of the sickle cell anemia. But in the context of a total absence of the beta chain that is in beta naught coexisting with sickle cell anemia, it's like hemoglobin SS. They will have severe disease as well too. And of course, sickle cell anemia is on the one hand, and on the other hand, there's thalassemia as well too. So you can just imagine uh, a double whammy effect that the individual will be going through. So it's going to severely, severely, uh, you know, hamper on the health of that individual in terms of disease severity and even the prognosis of that individual having sickle cell anemia and thalaco existing beta not thalassemia. <music>
or they are EE because they have done the hemoglobin phenotype and they are EE. Now, if they marry someone that is AS, remember, they are not AA, they are A not because the other E is missing. So if you do the Mendelian now, they are A not marrying AS. You understand? So the other A that is supposed, the O now that is supposed to be with the, I mean, sorry, when they in the normal in the normal context, the other A that is missing that's supposed to complement with the S of the other individual to form AS. Now in this context is missing. So they will now have a child that is what S not. So this S not now we, is sickle cell anemia. In fact, it will behave like sickle cell anemia. That's what I was talking about that the coexistence of sickle cell anemia with beta thalassemia not. That is the total absence of the beta, uh, beta uh, globin chain, so to speak. So if an individual inherits that absence of hemoglobin with the other one not being a normal hemoglobin E, but the hemoglobin S. So whether the person is SO or SS, they will be behave like uh, similar. They will behave similarly in terms of clinical condition. That is uh, SS now in that in this context. So it's also similar. That person that is also S not. If you do the electrophoresis strip, you only see one band of S. You are not sure whether it's only two copies of the S that is there, or just one copy of S, and the other one is absent. So there's no compensating E. There's no compensating S to make it SS. So the person just has one S. So the person will have sickle cell anemia as well too in that in that context. So that's why I said anybody that is hemoglobin A should go ahead to quantify. Apart from now you have identified that you are hemoglobin A, yes. Go ahead. It might cost you money. But posterity will not judge you for error. Because you have gone ahead to also quantify the hemoglobin A that you have to know whether it's in the normal range of the adult quantity. An adult quantity should be about 95 to 98% of hemoglobin A. That is if you have two copies of AE now. Now, if you have one copy, it will reduce it to about 50% or even less to maybe 30% to some extent. You understand? So when you now do HPLC and it's telling you that you have HBA quantity now being 30 to 50%, it's just know that you might have Italasemia in that instance and marrying someone that is AS will be very dangerous because there's every tendency or every possibility rather that you might have a child that will come down with sickle cell anemia. So such instances, so people that are AA or A0 that is A thalassemia now should also look for a partner that is AA so that they can avert, <laughs> they can avert, you know, uh, uh, the likelihood or having a child with sickle cell anemia shouldn't marry an individual that has AS. So it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole complex uh, uh, structure, so to speak. So you can actually appreciate what hematologists do now sometimes, you know, in that context, trying to explain what some of these things are. And these issues that I'm talking about, you know, has actually broken homes. I remember I had a senior colleague, a very senior colleague from Lagos, that recounted his experience in his, in his years of practice as well too, that he actually had some three cases that it happened like that in that instance. And all they could talk about, that is the family, the relatives could talk about was that, okay, the wife, uh, there was an issue of infidelity, so to speak now. Don't let us, you know, choose sides. But of course, usually it goes to the women because they are the ones that carry the children and, you know, give birth to children. So that there was an issue of infidelity and the man thought that the child wasn't his until these things were explained to him and they went ahead to quantify, to identify and quantify the hemoglobin you know, that he has and they found out that he actually had a coexisted thalassemia with his AE. So in that instance, uh, a diagnosis was made and I think uh, a home was actually saved from being broken just because of these uh, issues. Yes, it's curable. Well, you mean um, with thalassemias now? Yeah, the same way you do stem cell transplantation for sickle cell anemia can also cure uh, patients with severe form of thalassemia now, not the mild form. If it's the mild form that there are no clinical symptoms, of course, do no harm. That's one of our slogans as medical doctors. So just leave the individual be. The person does not have any symptoms. He's living his normal life, playing football, flying airplane all around, no problems. Just leave him as, as, as he is. But should an individual have a severe form of thalassemia, that is the coolest anemia now, Yes, it's curable as well too via stem cell transplantation, just like sickle cell anemia.